Now we can begin in Jesus' name. Did you guys pray for me? God, give me the strength physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Right? Preserve me in His perfect power and love to glorify the name of Jesus. All right. Anyway, I beg the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to anoint me tonight by the power of His Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Set me apart by His Spirit. Clothe me with His Spirit and fill me with His Spirit, granting me perfect health spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically, the strength to do the work that the Lord Jesus has assigned to me for the glory of Jesus Christ. May he purify my motives, my desires, my mind, my thoughts, my mouth, the words of my mouth, my tongue, my entire being in the blood of Jesus, so that I do this solely for the glory of Christ and to bless the people of the Lord Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. I beg the Father to grant everyone here the grace of His Spirit, with wisdom and knowledge and understanding coming from His Spirit, to understand the answers, as He protects me from error and anoints me to speak truth accurately, passionately, boldly, but also lovingly and compassionately. And I pray the Father will protect us from distractions of the enemy, protect us from His children coming in and blaspheming and attacking us. And I pray the Father watch over our loved ones, our family, whether our spouses, our children, our parents, our siblings, and preserve them and grant them grace and salvation and wholeness, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, and physically. We love you, Father. Help me, Lord, to glorify you. We love your Son, the Lord Jesus. And we love your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Guys, you ready? All right. Here's the objection. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Post that for me, Millie. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Here's the objection. If Jesus is God, then he must be omniscient. He must be all-knowing. Therefore, why would God have to give Jesus the revelation that was made known to John, which John wrote down in the Holy Spirit? You understand the objection? Does everyone understand the objection? Okay. How do you answer that? Well, before I give you an answer, it's vitally important to study what Revelation teaches as a whole concerning the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. To take one verse out of the context of the immediate chapter and the book as a whole is not exegesis, it's eisegesis. Does everyone understand what I'm saying? Revelation has 22 chapters, right? And in those 22 chapters, John, by the Holy Spirit, has a lot to say about the Lord Jesus Christ. If I want to know what Revelation has to say about Christ, I need to look at the book in its entirety. Read the book as, as a whole in order to see what John has to say about the person of Christ. And then I can properly understand Revelation 1.1. -1. Is everyone with me? See, I'm trying to help you and teach him. To some of you, I'm preaching to the choir. You already know this. I'm trying to help you get the most out of your Bible study, and how to study the Bible. The way you study the Bible is by reading the book in its entirety and see what the author has to say about any given subject. For example, if I pick up the book in the Gospel of John, and I want to know what John has to say about salvation, I need to find every single... Everyone with me, right? Okay. Likewise, if I want to know what John believes... See, now I like an ill fig. Although he's a former Christian who's a Muslim, he agrees with that method because he employs the same method with the Quran. He would he would tell me, I want you to read the entire Quran and see what the Quran as a whole has to say about any given subject. That I respect. He's being consistent. Good for you, Enel Fig. You're showing me thus far that you're not your typical Muslim apologist, and I pray the Lord grants you grace, leading to repentance, to come back to the feet of Jesus. With that said, John Bob. This is not just for you, but for everyone else, but specifically you, because you asked me the question. Let's see, let's see what Revelation as a whole has to say about the person of Christ. You guys ready? We're going to try to see. So it's going to take me maybe an hour, maybe more. Are you up for it? Okay. Let's just look at Revelation 1 to see what we can discern and learn about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I can actually start from Revelation 1, verses 9, and go all the way to 18. To see the way that Jesus is described is exactly the same way God is described in the Old Testament. And I may do that. However, I may come back and show you that. But however, let's just go to Revelation 1, 17. And by the way, before we go to Revelation 1, 17, since we have a Muslim here, I'm going to ask him a question. 
And I'm not putting you on the spot to attack your religion. And Elfig, I'm not attacking you. Would you agree with me that the title, first and the last, right? Al Akhir wa al Awal, Al Akhir wa al Awal, the first and the last, is a title belonging to God. The reason why I say that, Sai Christian, can you post Surah 57, verse 3 for me? Surah 57, verse 3 for me. So, and Il Fig, the Quran says that one of the names of Allah, a name belonging to Him, is the first and the last. Al Awal means the first. Wa al Akhir. Al Akhir means the last. Arabic, Al Awal, the first. Al Akhir, the last. In chapter 57, verse 3 of the Quran, we are told. Allah is the first and the last. So, Sai Christian, if you can post that for me, I appreciate it. Because I'm going to ask an, an Ilfig a question, and it's not to attack you. I just want you to see if you recognize this point. American women, if you want an accurate translation of the Quran, meaning understand what the Arabic says, then you don't use Muslim translations. Use translations done by non-Muslims, non like A.J. Arbery. Okay, Sai Christian, thank you. And thank you, I Truth Man. Now, is an Ilfig here? Anil Fig, are you there? Okay, hold on. Okay, Anil Fig, do you see what the Quran says? He's the first and the last. Do you agree the first and last is a title of God that belongs to God alone? Do you agree? You agree with that? Okay, good. He agrees. Now, Millie, do me a favor. Post Isaiah 44, verse 6. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Who's the first and the last? Okay, Anil Fig, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, agrees with the Quran. First and the last is a title of God. Read this with me in El Fig, Isaiah 44, 6. Thus says Yahweh the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. So the Quran agrees with the Old Testament. God, Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's the first and the last, and there is no one else. Isaiah 48, 12. Isaiah 48, 12. Guys, when I ask this question of an El Fig, do not answer, please. The rest of you don't answer the question. Because I'm going to direct this next question to him again, and that will be it. I don't want him to think I'm picking on him, but I just want him to see this point for himself. Isaiah 48, verse 12. Listen to me, O Jacob and Israel, whom I called. I am he, I am the first, and I am the last. There is no doubt that first and last is a title of God. Old Testament agrees, the Quran agrees. Now, Revelation 117, Millie. Post Revelation 117. Here's my question for Anil Fig. It's very hard to pronounce your name, dude. Anil Fig? Anyway, I may just call you Fig because it's it's doing a number on my tongue. Elias, all right. Okay, Elias, read this for me. Elias, read this passage. When I saw him, I fell on his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand, hand on me saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Elias, you agree the one who's the first and last is God, right? So this is God speaking in 17, right? Fear not, I am the first and last. You agree, right? This is God speaking, because the Quran says first and last is the title of God. Did you catch it, guys? Okay. You agree this is God speaking? Revelation 117, again, Millie, because he just finally said yes. Post it one more time. Okay. When I saw him, I fell on his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and last. Now, you don't have to believe this book is inspired. You don't even have to believe the author had a vision of God. The point is, as far as the book is concerned, who is the author seeing? You don't have to believe it's true. Maybe he made it up. That's not the point. I'm not saying commit to the book. The author is seeing Jesus. So you just admit to everyone here, Jesus claiming the first last. I thought you told me first last is God. So who's the author seeing? Read the verse again, Elphick. Fear not, I am the first and the last. That's Jesus or is that God? The Quran says first and last is Allah. Old Testament says that's Jehovah. So who is the author claiming to see here? First and the last is the title of God. So the author is claiming to see who, Elias? Once he answers this, we'll move on. Okay, clear, right? Can any creature apply this title to himself, uh, Elias? Can a creature apply this divine title to himself if he's God-fearing? Now, if he's a blasphemer, yeah, okay. God will destroy him. But can a righteous servant of God, a prophet of God, claim to be the first and the last? No. Okay. Did you guys hear Elias? He honestly admit, first and last is the title of God. No God-fearing creature, no prophet would ever use this title for himself. Does everyone see Elias admitting this? People, 
Did you just see it just admitted in text? Everyone saw that? Millie, now post Revelation 1, 17 to 18, back to back. Revelation 1, 17 to 18, back to back. Elias. Let's read it together, Elias. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, the living one. I died, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Here God claims to have died and come back to life. In other words, the one claiming to be the first and last in Revelation is Jesus Christ. And even Elias admitted the title first and last is a title of God, no righteous prophet would ever use it for himself. Right, folks? So Elias indirectly conceded, acknowledged, admitted that Jesus in the New Testament claims to be God. You guys see that? Indirectly conceded, admitted, acknowledged that Jesus Christ claimed to be God. Wow. And yet the Muslims will tell me Jesus never claimed to be God. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, Elias, may the Lord Jesus convict you by what you just read and drive you back to his feet because, like I said, you don't know Jesus. Had you known Jesus, you would have never left him for Muhammad. But now coming back to John Bob. John, is it clear that Jesus Christ claimed to be Jehovah by claiming a title that belongs to Jehovah alone? Is it clear? Not only that, the Muslim raised this objection, right? It was a Muslim who raised this objection against you, correct? Okay, now John, I just got a Muslim to admit in front of you, first and last is a title belonging to God, so that the one speaking to John must be God. He just admitted indirectly that Jesus is God. Last. Don't forget the verse in the Quran, John. 57 verse 3, Allah says he's the first and the last. Therefore, for Jesus to claim to be the first and last, Jesus is claiming to be God. Now follow my logic, John. If in that very same chapter, that same chapter of Revelation 1, where it says Jesus was given the revelation to give to his servants, that same chapter, that same chapter, John, Jesus claims a title which identifies him as God, right, John? As Jehovah God. As Yahweh God, right, John? Now, my question to you is this. If Jesus claims a title which ends up identifying him as Yahweh, and if Yahweh is all-knowing, doesn't this prove that Jesus is all-knowing? You with me in my logic? Isaiah 44, 6, Isaiah 48, 12. Yahweh, Jehovah says he's the first and the last. Revelation 1, 17, 18, Jesus says he's the first and the last. Well, in order for Jesus to be the first and last, he must be Yahweh. And the crowd agrees, first the last is the title of God. Well, if Jesus is Yahweh, then Jesus is all-knowing. Therefore, whatever, whatever Revelation 1-1 one, one means, it cannot mean that Jesus did not know the revelation already. It must mean something else. Are you with me? Whatever Revelation 1-1 one, one means, it cannot mean that Jesus didn't know the revelation already. It must mean something else. Do you see what I'm trying to prove? That if you read Revelation 1-1 one, one, in the context of Revelation, the last conclusion that you arrive at is that Jesus did not know the Revelation. That's not what John is trying to communicate. That's not John's point. Are you with me, John Bob? The fact that some people have to twist verse 1 out of context to arrive at that conclusion, that's their problem. John goes out of his way to depict Jesus as Yahweh God, God Almighty, even though he's not the Father or the Holy Spirit. Revelation 2.8. There's more. I got a lot more. Okay? Revelation 2.8. If you got time, I got a lot more, John Bob. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, the words of the first and last who died and came to life. A second time where Jesus identifies himself as the first and the last. How do we know it's Jesus? Because he's the one who died and came to life. Right, John? Jesus is the one who died and came to life. Correct? Okay, Revelation 1.8, Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and was, who is to come, the Almighty. Now notice, John Bob, Alpha and Omega is the title that belongs to God Almighty. The Lord God, the Almighty, says he's the Alpha and Omega. Don't forget this point. Don't forget 
the point of the Lord God Almighty claiming to be the Alpha and Omega. Let's go to Revelation 21, 6 to 7. Revelation 21, 6 to 7. 21, verses 6 to 7. And he said to me, it is done. I'm the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Catch this, beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from, from uh, I'm sorry. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I'll be his God, he'll be my son. So notice, the Lord God Almighty, our God, the believer's God, is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And by the way, for those of you who may not know, Alpha and Omega happens to be the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's like saying, I am A and Z. Alpha and Omega is the same as beginning and the end, the first and the last. Means he's the beginning, he's the end. You start with him, you end with him, right? So now here's a question to everyone. Can you have two firsts and two lasts? Can you have two alphas and two omegas? Can you have two beginnings and two, two ends? Wouldn't that be a contradiction? If you're the beginning, no one else can be, right? If you're the end, no one else can be. To say you're the beginning, beginning means there's no one else... <laughs> Because everyone else comes after you, right? So it would be a contradiction to say there are two beginnings and two ends, right? It's a contradiction to say there are two A's and two Z's, two firsts and two last, correct? Okay, if that's clear. Let's go to Revelation 22, 12 to 13. Revelation 22, 12 to 13. Watch this, John Bob. Revelation 22, 12 to 13. Behold, now, Bob, John Bob, pay attention to the following words. I am coming soon, pay attention to that one, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. Notice, the one speaking says he's coming soon, and he's going to reward, repay everyone for what he has done. Now, this one who's speaking, who says he's coming soon, notice what he says about himself in verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Wow, he quotes all the titles. This one who's coming soon says, I'm Alpha and Omega, I'm NZ, I'm the first and last, I'm the beginning and the end. Now, in order to know who's speaking, jump to verse 20. Behold, I'm coming soon. Same chapter, verse 20. Let's see who's speaking. Verse 20. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Wow. John Bob, who's speaking in verses 12 to 13? Who is the one in verses 12 to 13 says, I'm coming soon, and I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first, last, the beginning, the end. Clear as day, right? So wait, John, I'm really confused here. The Lord God, the Almighty, the believer's God, claims to be the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end. And yet here Jesus says, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, and the first and the last. Remember what we said, you can't have two firsts, you can't have two last. You can't have two beginnings, you can't have two ends. You can't have two alphas, you can't have two omegas. So how can Jesus be the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end, if he's not the Lord God, the Almighty? Can he be? Can he be, John Bob? If Jesus is not the Lord God, the Almighty, can he be the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end? Titles which the Lord God, the Almighty, the believers God, Claims for himself. But Jesus does claim to be the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Then who in the world is Jesus? Who is Jesus claiming to be? Okay, well, John, if he's claiming to be God, and one of the essential attributes of God is that God is omniscient, how in the world is someone going to quote Revelation 1 1 to prove that Jesus isn't omniscient? If the entire book of Revelation goes out of its way to prove that Jesus is God Almighty. Do you see the problem with quoting Revelation 1-1 out of context, John? So whatever Revelation 1-1 means, it does not mean that Jesus didn't know the Revelation, right? Whatever it means, it can't mean that, correct? If Revelation goes out of its way to portray Jesus as God Almighty, as Yahweh, Yahweh in the flesh, then as Yahweh God Almighty, he must know everything and therefore must know the Revelation, right? I could stop there and I prove my case. That Revelation 1-1, whatever it means, it does not refute the fact that Jesus is God. I could just stop there, right, John Bob? And I made my case, right? But I'm going to give you a lot more. Same chapter, Revelation 22. Are you ready, John, for more? Are you guys ready for some more goodies? 
to see who Jesus is according to Revelation? All right. Revelation 22, 6 to 7. John Bob, watch this. Revelation 22, 6 to 7. Revelation 22, 6 to 7, John Bob. Read this with me. And he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel. Don't forget that, John Bob. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, the God who's in control over the, the prophet spirits, who controls them, right, sent his angel to show his servants what's, what must soon take place. And behold, I'm coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. So notice what we are being told here. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, the God who's in control over the prophet's spirits, sent his angel to show his servants this revelation, and he's coming soon. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets is. Now let's look at Revelation 22, 16 and verse 20. Revelation 22, 16 and verse 20. Same chapter. Let's see what, what we find. Revelation 22, 16 and verse 20. I, Jesus, have sent my angel. Did you catch it? John, Bob, and Sai Christian, did you catch it? Verse 6 says, The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel. But verse 16, Jesus says, I sent my angel to testify to you about these things for the churches. And then in verse 20, Jesus is the one who says he's coming soon. So now I'm really confused. Did the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, send his angel? And is he coming soon? Or did Jesus send his angel, and Jesus is coming soon? Help me understand what's going on here. Who sent who, and who's coming soon? The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, or Jesus? What's the answer? Not only they're the same essence, John Bob, that's not it. I think you're missing the point. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, is none other than Jesus Christ. The context shows that John is referring to Jesus as the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. So I think you didn't catch it. Millie did, Pats did, Truth Be Told did. Right? American Woman did. John, I, did you catch it now? If in one verse uh, it says, the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sends his angel, and he's coming soon. But another verse says, Jesus sent his angel, he's coming soon. Then the conclusion is, Jesus is the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. Susie got it. Good. Glory to God. You see why I ask questions? Because I want to make sure I'm not confusing you guys. I'm not going too fast. So don't feel like I'm belittling you. If that's what you feel like, I apologize. That's not my intention. I have to ask questions, repeat myself, because I know I can speak too fast, and I'm dealing with complex issues. So bear with me. So now, John Bob, if Jesus is the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, how in the world could a Muslim use the book of Revelation to prove that Jesus isn't God? Can, can you help me understand that logic? Can you help me understand that logic, John? You got it. Isn't it clear as day that Jesus Christ is God Almighty? And if he's God Almighty, then he must be all-knowing, right? And if he's all-knowing, then he must know the revelation, right? Okay. It's going to get a little better, folks. By the way, what are you learning tonight? You're learning. It's vitally important that we know our Bible inside and out. So if someone misquotes a book of the Bible... Because we know what that, that book teaches, we'll be able to refute that person. We need to know this book. Spend more time prayerfully studying the book, asking God to give you the power of the Holy Spirit to understand it and live it. Not just to know it, folks, but we got to live it zealously for the glory of Jesus because he's worthy, right? Amen? We want to know it so we can live better lives, more holy lives, more pleasing lives to Jesus because he's worthy and able to refute the attacks against our faith. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. So pray for me that I can live these truths for the glory of Jesus, because he's worthy. And we love and we worship and we adore the Lord Jesus. He's our God. He's our life. And he's real and he lives. Praise his holy name. We love you, Lord. Preserve us in your love forever. I got more. This is all warm-up, folks. I got a lot of chapters. I got at least another hour of solid material. Let's look at Revelation 22, 12 again. Revelation 22, 12. Watch this now. Watch what I'm going to do with this one, uh, John Bob. We know this is Jesus. I've established already. If you continue reading chapter of Jesus, he's the one who's coming soon. Behold, I'm coming soon, bringing my recompense with me. Remember that language, John Bob. Bringing my recompense. Recompense means 
my payment, my repayment to pay you, right? My reward, my payment to pay you for what you've done, right? I'm going to recompense you. I'm going to repay you for what you've done. I'm going to reward you for what you've done. It can have a positive and negative connotation. Anyway, bringing my recompense with me to repay each one for what he has done. Don't forget the language. This is Jesus speaking, John Bob. Now let's go to Revelation 2, 18 to 23. It's a long one, but it ties in with verse 12 of 22. We're going to go to Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 to 23. Revelation 2, 18 to 23. Okay. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write the words of the Son of God. Did you catch that, John Bob? It's Jesus speaking. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because you're going to see what Jesus says in 23. To the angel of the church in Thyatira write the words of the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works. Who's speaking, John Bob? Who's speaking? According to Revelation 2.18, who's the one saying, I know your works, your love and faith and servant and patient endurance, that your latter works exceed the first? The Son of God, who's Jesus? You're right. Excellent. Let's jump to 23. Jesus is speaking the Son of God. Let's see what he says in 23. Watch this. Watch, watch what happens here, John Bob. We'll skip to 23. I will strike her children dead. Now notice what Jesus says. <clears throat> All the churches will know that I am he. I, Jesus, am he who searches mind and heart and will give to each of you according to your works. Notice Jesus here in Revelation 2.23 and 22.12 says that he is the one who searches the hearts and minds of everyone and is able to repay everyone for what he or she has thought and done. Do you see that, John Bob? Do you see that? Here's my question to you, John Bob. What kind of attributes must Christ know in order to be able to repay everyone and repay everyone perfectly for what, for what he or she has thought and done? What attributes must he have? Okay, ex excellent. He must be all-knowing. What else? To be able to repay them. Everyone. For whatever they thought and whatever they have done. Millie got it. He has to be omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. He has to know every single thought, word, and deed that every person has done. And he must have inexhaustible riches in order to repay everyone according to what they have done, right? And thought and spoken. Now, John, let me ask you this question. If Jesus claims to be the one who knows the hearts and minds of everyone and will repay everyone perfectly, he will repay you perfectly for what you've done, which is a, an assertion to being omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, present everywhere, overseeing everything, because everything is present to him, which is why he can see everything, and he has access to the hearts of everyone, searches minds and hearts, and he's all-powerful, powerful enough to repay everyone for what they've done. How can someone then use Revelation 1-1 to prove that Jesus doesn't know everything because he doesn't know the revelation that God gave him? How can someone do that, uh, John Bob? Can you tell me? Isn't it clear from these passages Jesus is claiming to be omniscient deity, claiming to be God because only God is all-powerful, all-knowing, present everywhere, present everywhere. Okay, but John Bob, it's going to get a little better. It's going to get a little better. You ready? 